Hey everyone, Mmaker here. So a while back I had released a tutorial on how to do automatic screen flipping in After Effects for YTPMV stuff. And since then quite a few things have changed. Um, there's been a, a couple of scripts made for Reaper and a couple of scripts I've made for After Effects that have helped me automate the process a whole lot more. So I'm not sure if this is really gonna be a tutorial video it's more so just going to be me sort of going over what I use now to automate a lot of the tedious YTPMV stuff that I do in After Effects and I'll be releasing all this stuff and you can check it out in the, the description there will be some links to it so yeah let's just get started so first things first in my tutorial I explained like for each of your items you have to have a MIDI track created like this and you had to go in and for each item here you just like created a note for them right and so you did that for each item and see it was really tedious to do because it's like you're redoing the work of course it's like if you use a sampler you won't have to do this but for most people they're still using the normal copy paste individual clips and stuff. So someone made a script to automate this process, which you can get on Repack, which is a package manager for Reaper that has a lot of scripts from a bunch of people they've created for it, and it's completely free to download. So there'll be a link to this in the description, of course. You can just download it. And once it's downloaded and installed, you can just go up to Extensions, Repack, and browse packages and the package we're looking for here is by Yatsume Home. I think he goes by webcam on YouTube and Twitter um, and it's called turn item pitch in this like track into MIDI notes so after you install that I think you just double click on it and it'll like give you some info on it you just hit install I already have it installed so I don't need to do that but after you do that all you have to do is go up to actions show action list search for the same thing in here and you can assign this to a, a shortcut as well as if you want um, but then all you have to do is select the track you want converted and just hit run and you'll see it did all that what we normally have to do manually all for us right there so from there you can just follow the previous tutorial if you want and go from there without having to do all that tedious work now with that so moving on to the scripts I've created, and these are going to be on GitHub, there will be links to them in the description, is the first one, it's called Add Markers from JSON, it was just the name I had while I was making it. But this is going to allow you to import from a Reaper project file all the item locations and if you have them all the MIDI note locations or position data I should say directly into After Effects if I like having to do a MIDI script conversion or anything like that. So in order to use this the first thing you have to do is any track you want imported into After Effects you just prefix it with a exclamation point like this. So anything of that one isn't going to get imported. So like if you have stuff like vocals, I usually don't import the track position data for this. So I just, you know, leave that title normally. Don't include the exclamation point before. So that's all you have to do in the Reaper project to get the tracks imported. But to install this for After Effects, all you have to do is go down to the releases page download the zip from here I've already done that and you just put the files into your script UI panels folder these will be the files right here so if you're used to installing scripts in After Effects this will be pretty familiar to you so in After Effects I already have my audio imported and I already have a clip for the sample I want to use created so after you install the script and relaunch After Effects, it'll just be under Window, and make your underscore add markers from JSON. I'll open this window here, 
where you can then load your Reaper project and there'll be a couple more settings after you load it in. So load our Reaper project really quick. I have it in this directory. So just give it a second and then it'll import all the position data as JSON data because you can actually also run this script as a standalone script for, just from the terminal, which might be useful in some scenarios. And you'll see under track name, it'll have all the tracks we can select from. So then all we have to do is we can select like lead two. This is the one I'm looking for specifically. There's a frame offset that will use the current composition frame rate and offset the position of those markers by a few frames or however many you input here. I usually set this to negative two because I find it lines up better with the audio. Whereas zero, it feels like it's a little bit delayed. So negative two and we'll just hit go. See that create the markers we can then use with the other script I've created. It's actually less of a script. It's more of a expressions library. So previously there was like this expression code you had to copy and paste for each time you want to do this. And it's not really convenient to do it that way. Cause I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it'd be nicer if it's more something you can just easily, I guess, remember without having to copy and paste the same thing. And it's not as easy for me personally to like go back and change things if I want to. And this is just called MMKR. It's just <laughs> my username, but shorter. So to download this, just go over to the releases, same thing. Uh, this JSX file is what you want. So after you download that, you'll just, I'll show it right now. You can just go over to After Effects and drag that in. I already have it dragged in, so I'll just remove that really quick. But now I can just import my sample. And Right now it's just playing back normally, nothing different here. Uh, but we're gonna enable time remapping. The first do the time reset of this for each of these markers. So the basic way to use this is, and you can look at the GitHub documentation as well. There's a couple different ways you can use this, but simplest way would just be set this to a constant, we'll pull out I have a object called YTPMV we can just pull out from this. And this is going to be pulling from the source data of the JSX file. Actually, this needs to be footage. Then we get the source data. I'm just run get functions on that. And then all you have to do is call the function I have in there. So it's just called time reset. Just drag this out and play this back. And that didn't do anything because I need to actually put in what I wanted to use for that, which is this comp and the markers from this comp. So then it'll reset for each of those markers. Then for the flip. Do a similar thing, we'll just apply the transform effect. Just copy this first line here because we will have to use at least this line in every expression that uses this JSX file. And all you have to do on this one is ytpmv.flip and same thing as comp.marker. And that's all there is to it. So from here, I don't know, you could move around the markers to retie them if you need to, and this will respond to it accordingly. And you can always, let's see, delete all markers. We can import a different track if we want to, just like this one. Of course, that's not the right track at all for the audio, but you get the idea. So it's just a lot more convenient to import things and change them if I really need to. So it, like, because of the previous method, you'd be copy pasting an expression into here and you 
if you change that one and you want to apply it to all the others, it was usually a real pain to do that. But now all you have to do is modify this one JSX file, which has the expression in it. And it's just a lot less code you have to write. And it's a lot more convenient, I think. So not saying everyone might find this useful, but maybe some people will. And this is just, so I don't know, I'm just sort of rambling now, but this has been my recent workflow to make a lot of this stuff easier. And I know not everyone uses Reaper, so if there's enough interest, I'll probably look into seeing if I can make this work with other DAWs. Of course, there's always like the MIDI import method if you want to use that, but importing it directly from the project is a lot more convenient, especially if you still do it the old school way, just doing it directly from the audio files, because this will work with both audio files and MIDI items in the Reaper project. So that's about all I have to say. Um, there will probably be some more scripts I'll release too eventually, because I have, I can show this really quick. I have a script that will, for each composition marker, I can have it, yeah, duplicate the selected layer for each marker. I actually have to apply a marker to this layer to make this work. So I'll just duplicate the layer and for each marker it will place it there. Uh, the useful scenario for this is if like, I like, let's say I scale this down and up really fast. I make that a little bit longer. And actually, I need to undo this because I already had that expression set, but it's easy enough to do. We just get rid of that. Get the time remap. Uh, run the script again, and so no, that's just an easier way. And so, like when the clips overlap, it's less work I have to do to make that work as well. I'll probably be releasing that script soon. I'll, I have a lot of these like little utility scripts that do things like this that I'll get out there eventually. So that's about all this was. So that's about all I wanted to share. It was less so of a tutorial and more just showing my workflow and some of the tools I use and maybe some other people will find those useful. So that's about all and thanks for watching.